In today's day, you cannot win without the Hispanic vote. In 2020, it was the first time there was more Hispanic voters than black voters, meaning we became the largest minority voting bloc in the country. And you look at the demographics, and if the black vote, if the college-educated vote, if the white suburban mom vote, if it doesn't lean any more right, which all signs show that we're shifting more to the right, if you, if President Trump can just get 5% of the Hispanic electorate to shift to the right, that's enough to basically win this election. In 2020, President Trump got about 30% of the Hispanic vote. President Biden got about 60% of the Hispanic vote. Today's polling shows them neck and neck tied by about only 1% of an advantage point for the Democrats. If President Trump can get more than 45% of the Hispanic vote this election cycle, he will successfully have been the Republican presidential candidate that has received more Hispanic votes since 1970. You know, a recent poll just came out last week from Axios showing that there are there is more enthusiasm and probability with Latino Republicans going out and voting this year than Latino Democrats. And I believe that it's because the high inflation and cost of living that Hispanics have seen under this administration, uh, to which now they're eagerly excited to support President Trump because you know, they remember how easy their life was or easier their life was under the administration um, and how how much President Trump really protected the economic mobility among Hispanic leaders and Hispanic civilians in America under the four years that he was president. The rebranding of Latinos for Trump to Latino Americans for Trump uh, really shows that pre how President Trump truly understands the makeup of the Hispanic electorate in America. The average age of Hispanics in America are 29 year old, meaning we're the youngest racial demographic in the country. Not only that, but two thirds of Hispanics on the voter rolls are second and third generation uh, Hispanic Americans. So what does that mean? That means that English is predominantly our first language. We're assimilating to American culture better. A lot of us have a college degree. Um, and so the issues that maybe our grandparents or parents cared about, lumping immigration into one single box, are not necessarily the issues that Latino Americans care about in today's day. You look at polling and Hispanics under the age of 40 care about economic mobility, about education, about safety and security. I like to say that Hispanics in America, we're 200%. We're 100% Hispanic and 100% American. We are fiercely loyal to our Latino culture and heritage, but we also like to be identified and seen as American because for millions of us, this is our home country. We were born into this country. We understand American culture and President Trump understands that. But because now President Trump sees these Hispanic voters as they are Americans, He's giving them a really big welcome, or I like to say a bienvenido, into the Republican Party today. I think polling shows that immigration today doesn't even make the top three issues that Hispanics care about. It's incredibly important, but I think what's more important for Hispanics today in America is being able to feed their families, putting gas in their cars to get to work, and getting this inflation under control. Um, I think that, that that trumps uh this idea of immigration. And let's be completely honest, when it comes to immigration reform, Hispanics have been burned on this issue time and time again. President Trump understands this and he knows this. Um, that which is why he has been very vocal about legal immigration should happen. We should we should allow those that are high skilled and want to assimilate to American culture to allow to be here. But I believe that before we even talk about that, we need to talk about two really important things that Hispanics uh, voters care about, and that is securing our border and getting inflation under control so that we can leave, live peacefully uh, in this country. So I think it's really, really interesting to break down the Hispanic electorate I think for years, when people say Hispanic outreach, they've always tend to see Hispanics as just one monolithic voting bloc. We know in America, over 60% of Hispanics in this country are of Mexican descent. Traditionally, the Republican Party uh, put
puts their messaging and even their media surrogates to reflect our friends out in South Florida, those of Cuban and Puerto Rican descent, oftentimes not listening or catering to the Mexican American uh, or the Colombian vote. Uh, I think President Trump has really shifted that and has really understood and seen Hispanics as they are. But more importantly, he understands that all of those Hispanic electorates care about really one thing at its core, and that is protecting the American dream. Majority of Hispanics in America believe that this country is headed in the wrong tracks and believe that the American dream is no longer obtainable. That is really sad and unfortunate for young Hispanics who believe that their grandparents or their parents' uh, makeup of the American dream is no longer uh, achievable for them. President Trump knows that he needs to, above everything, protect the American dream and make this economy work for everyone. And then he understands how to really vocalize that regarding of uh, where he's at uh, on the campaign trail. Many Latin countries, including Mexico, where my parents are from, are one of the biggest um, uh, you know, foreign alliances that, that, and trade partners that America has. President Trump knows one thing, and that is that America first doesn't mean America alone. And you saw the way he renegotiated NAFTA to USMCA, uh, which benefited uh, you know, Mexico and North American free trade deal. I think above everything, President Trump is a businessman before he's a politician. So he knows how to run this country in a way that flourishes a business, not just for America, but for our trade partners uh, in Latin America. So if all signs point to how President Trump ran the first four years of his administration, we could see a positive relations uh, with countries like Mexico and Colombia. There so much so uh, if uh, those relations uh, are fair in trade and economic effort, efforts uh, to America. Yeah, look, something that I really do admire about President Trump is that he doesn't believe in uplifting voices simply because of your race uh, and your gender. He believes in uplifting voices, uh, that those that are the most qualified to get the message out there. He himself is going to the community, and I believe this is why he gets a lot of respect from Hispanics, because he doesn't wait for the community to go to him. He goes to the community and he shares why he sees Hispanics as uplifting the economy, hardworking Americans. And I think that's the best way to get more people attracted to his campaign. As specifics when it comes to those of Mexican or Colombian or Puerto Rican backgrounds, and, and we can the list goes on and on and on, the campaign has done a really good job of giving the resources and the tools needed to, to do better outreach into our communities. And his campaign is doing a really good job of scouting those organizations, scouting those leaders, and giving them the resources that they need um, to really make the argument into their community. Uh, you know, as a, a, the leader of an organization that focuses on Hispanic outreach, I can tell you there are a number of small local grassroots organizations that are Hispanic, that are getting the message out there in these critical counties, in these critical states, that the campaign is giving them the tools and the resources to do effective uh, outreach, something that the Republican Party typically hasn't done uh, in the past presidential campaigns.